Hey guys! So today I am going to be talking about a piercing. If you can't tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about a date piercing. Before we start, I'm just going to apologize for how I look. My hair is a mess, so it's up in a ponytail. I have this huge pimple on my face, and I'm in a dirty fucking sweatshirt, and it's just not my day today. So, so anyway, um, so two days ago, on the 27th, I got my date pierced. Um, so I'm going to be talking about that experience with you guys. In the future, when I get piercings or tattoos or more tattoos, whatever, I'm going to see if my parlor will allow, parlor will allow filming um, or anything. I know they'll let you take pictures while you're there, but um, in the future, if I ever like go, oh, if, I, if, I, if someone comes with me to get a piercing or a tattoo, I will see if my parlor allows filming while we're there so I can document my experiences and stuff like that. So unfortunately, this, piercing was not um, filmed at all. I do have two pictures, which I'll show later in the video, uh, right after it got done. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be talking about my piercing. I will talk about my experience first. Usually most of my, pier my piercings now are mostly spur of the moment things. I used to have like this piercing like fiasco where I would always I would always like obsess over certain piercings and I would research it and all that and I would call ahead to make an appointment and all that and usually my, my parlor usually um it's just a walk-in with piercings you can walk in and you know tell them what you want and then wait for them to put it in the autoclave and all that so that's pretty much what I did I got out of work at t that day I think like 1 30 or 2 got in my car and I called them and I said hi I was just wondering if we do it if you guys have day's piercings and how much are they they said, yes we do. They can go from $35 to $60, depending on the jewelry you get. So I was like, okay, thank you. You know, I might be there in a few minutes. I was considering getting it. So I go down there. It's like a 15 minute drive from where I, I work. And I go in, I tell them that I want to get it done. And it's a pretty slow, it seems like it's pretty slow. I think they were finishing up. One of the, one of the ladies, the girl that was going to do my piercing, um, was finishing up uh, making an appointment for someone to do their tattoo um, so she was finishing that up um, when she was gonna finish that she was gonna get my jewelry put it in the autoclave and then quickly go eat her lunch um, so she did that and you know I'm sitting there I'm waiting it's probably about like a 20 20 minute 30 minute wait just for everything to get done and so once everything's done in the autoclave um, she sits me down in the chair and she washes her hands she puts her gloves on gets everything out of the autoclave um, which the autoclave, for those of you who don't know, is a piece of machinery that is used to sterilize um, jewelry. Jewelry tools used to um, pierce yourself. And so that, that includes things like uh, the, the actual piece of jewelry itself, the needle, any clamps that you need to use, any kind of like the clamp things, which you didn't need to use in my ear, stuff like that. All of, at least at my parlor that I go to, all of their tools come pre-packaged. The only thing that does not come pre-packaged is the jewelry itself, but they still throw it into the autoclave because it needs to be sterilized. So like the needle comes pre-packaged, which I think they throw everything pre-packaged into the autoclave and then they take it out and open it. And so that's what she did. She got Q-tips ready, uh, two-sided Q-tips, put some kind of sanitizing agent on there. Um, she cleaned my ear. I have it on my left side over here. She cleaned my ear. She marked the spot, and then it depends on what piercer I go to there. Some I get pierced by like ten different people there, which I don't really care. I know all of them really well, so I trust the people I'm putting my hands. I trust the people I'm putting my body into. If that makes sense, <laughs> I know what I was trying to say in my head. But anyway, so I I, much, I trust all the piercers there. I've been going there since I was thirteen. 13, 14, so I've been going there for like seven years now. So she marks the spot and she's like, okay, I want to count to three. On two, I want you to breathe in, and on three, I want you to breathe out. Some of the piercers there that pierce me do that, some of them don't. I don't really care. I know to make I know to make sure that I'm breathing while they're doing the piercing. I always breathe in through my nose, out through my mouth. But she had she this particular piercer happened to do that. So she counted, she counted to two, I breathe in, and she counted three and she breathed out. And I breathe out. And the reason why most people most um, piercers will do that or at least they'll make sure that you're breathing because they don't want you to hold in your breath because if you do hold in your breath you feel you you can even feel yourself you kind of tense up a little bit and they don't want that um, they want you to just be relaxed also make sure you eat like a snack type meal like maybe like a half an apple and some crackers and then some water 
um, just to make sure you're not going in an, on an empty stomach because sometimes if you get nervous that won't really help. Um, they always recommend drinking water, like a half a, half a cup or, or <laughs> sometimes they recommend drinking half a bottle or more of water before you go in, which I've been drinking water all morning so I was okay. And so anyway, so she, she counted, to, counted to three and she did it. It wasn't, it didn't, it didn't, it went in, the needle went into my ear fine, but this piercing was probably the second most piercing that hurt the worst. Um, the first one being my industrial, that one hurt like a fucking bitch. This is probably the second most piercing that hurt, as far as just piercing wise, I guess you could needle going through. I would probably give this a 7.5 out of 10. My industrial is probably an 8.5 out of 10. So this is going to be the second piercing that hurt the most. When it went through, I had, I heard a crunching sound because it's hard cartilage that they're piercing. And so she went to go pierce it and I'm sitting there like, because oh it hurt so freaking bad. The soreness afterward, it lingered for a few hours after I left, which is to be expected. You're getting, you're, you're um, piercing a hole into your body, so you're gonna get sore. It's like getting an actual cut or bruise or whatever on your body. So she put the needle through and I bled so bad. And I'm usually able to bleed, I usually bleed with every piercing that I've ever had, but every other piercing, I have never bled this bad. And I told her, I'm sitting there like, I'm so, so sorry, I don't usually bleed this bad. And she's like, do you drink a lot of energy to exert coffee? I was like, it's probably coffee. I had like two cups this morning. I, but I drink a lot of coffee, mostly. And you know, so she she had the needle through. I think she put the piece of jewelry through and she only had, she didn't she didn't put the second ball on to actually close it. So she had, she got the needle through. So she's cleaning it up, she's getting Q-tips to make sure I get, she gets all the blood off of the my ear and the piercing and all of that. And she's, she's constantly tossing tossing q-tips into the trash I'm like I'm so fucking sorry like I'm so sorry <laughs> so she spent like five minutes doing that and then once she cleaned it up she screwed the bottom ball in and she just told me about cleaning she's like I had my septum done she was there for the two times both times I got my septum done which I don't currently currently have in right now but um I was like yeah I, I, I always use dial and hypocrite soap and it's a foaming one that already comes out foamed it's a lot easier for me use comes out foam like that it's just easier for me I use q-tips and that way I don't have to lather up the soap myself so I'll wet a q-tip put this on then clean the piercing I do I use this for every single piercing that I've ever had besides my wrist dermal I, I never use soap on my wrist dermal so I said that I was like she's like you, do you remember how to clean your septum I was like yeah I do that two to three times a day and then sea salt soaps I usually do once a day if I really need it and she was like, yep, so do that. And do you have any more questions? I was like, nope. And I walked out of the parlor. She had me pay before she did the piercing. Uh, it came to $45 with the jewelry. They only pay, you can only pay there in cash. So I went to their ATM. I had to get $60 out because I wasn't sure how much it would be. And so I gave her the 60. I said, just give me five back and keep 10 for a tip. And I'm glad I did because she had to deal with all of that blood and all of that stuff. And she was a new piercer there. She, I think, I'm pretty sure she was done with her apprenticeship. Um, but still, so I was like, you know, I'm glad I gave her the ten dollars because I feel really bad for her being a really bad bleeder and um, and all that. So I will show you the piercing. I'm gonna try and get a close up as best as I can. Um, I apologize if I, if I don't get it. It's really far into my ear. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's in there. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can see it that well or not. Um, my ears are very tiny, so I was surprised that she was even able to get in there and get the day's pierced, but she pierced it with a curved barbell, and then I just got little black balls on it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a child, but, um, but yeah, so she did that. Healing time, Generally, it takes about six months to a year. I think for my industrial, it's like eight months to a year. So because it, the days is going through such hard cartilage, so it's gonna take a lot longer to heal. Pretty difficult for me to get into my ear and clean it. I can clean the bottom part, but it's getting in on the top part. That's difficult because I have a lot of like, it's like in a very closed space and it's hard for me to get the Q-tip up in there and clean it. So I'm hoping with this next paycheck that I get paid, I will get some H2 Ocean which is just a basic saline solution and just be able to spray it in there and do that. It do generally take, like I said, six to six months to a year to heal. It all depends on your body. Sometimes it might even take longer. If you're lucky, which I doubt would happen, but if you're lucky, it could take even sooner to heal. But like I said, it's a really sick 
piece of cartilage. I'm also glad that she used a curved barbell because I feel like if she did an actual hoop that I feel like it would move around a lot more and get caught on things and I just feel like it would keep it really irritated and that would just be a higher chance of getting um, hypertrophic scars. And hypertrophic scars are a lot different than keloids for those of you who are curious. Keloids are genetic and they require uh, medical attention to get removed. They actually need surgery to get removed. And hypertrophic scarring is when you get skin colored bumps that can go away over time. And if you ever get uh, hypertrophic scarring on uh, a piercing, which is very really common on ear piercings as well, I was actually lucky I did not get any on my industrial. But I've known people who constantly get them on the day's piercing. If you do get any, I've seen a lot of people recommend using tea tree oil over sea salt. Um, I mean, sea salt soaks can still work, but I've seen a lot of people recommend doing tea tree oil because it also helps with actual scarring. So when the tea, when the hypertrop, when the actual bumps go away, sometimes it might leave scars. So a lot of people recommend using the tea tree oil because it can help the scars go away. But it also is a little bit smelly, and I've heard people having problems of it really irritating the skin. I've never had to use tea tree oil. I haven't had the chance to use it yet. I think if I were in that situation where I needed to use it, I would probably use it once a day or every other day, knowing how much it can irritate the skin and make it really red. So that's just me. I, like I said, I did, I did really experiment and see what's good for me. I haven't had the chance to use it yet. The soreness has gone away since, since then. I got my date piercing mostly because I get migraines. They're very few and far between, but usually in between my migraines, I get like a mini migraine where I get a lot of pain in like my eye on my left eye, behind my left eye. It's like a really dull, just throbbing feeling. And I always get it here in like my temple eyebrow and like behind my eye. So I was hoping with getting it pierced, it would really alleviate a lot of that. I don't get migraines as frequent or as often as a lot of other people probably do. But I got it just for that, mostly. It's never actually been scientifically proven to help prevent migraines, but a lot of people have had success with these helping their migraines. I saw a video, I don't remember her username or anything, but I saw a video of a woman who got her days and she said that her my she used to get migraines like twice or three times a month and the first month she had it she had like about two migraines and the second month she only had ended up having one next month she only had one and she, her migraines were decreasing in number the few months that she's had her days so it all just depends on how you are like I said I don't get them as often but I get a, just a really dull really annoying pain behind my eye and just mostly on my left side it, my migraines always start on my left side of my face so. So there's that. I did, I don't know, okay, when I got it pierced, I don't know if it was like pressure, it wasn't like painful or anything, but I don't know if it was just pressure or some kind of discomfort, but I felt this weird feeling like in the joint of my jaw, and it's gone away since then, so I know it's not like permanent or anything, but it had this weird discomfort in my jaw, and I know as a kid I had braces because I had an overbite, it's still kind of there, see my tongue, and I don't wear retainers anymore. I used to only have to wear, after a while of wearing retainers, I used to only have to wear them at night, and I just stopped wearing them. And I, so I know my jaw is kind of still moving forward into an overbite again, so I don't know if it just messed with that. But like I said, it's been gone now, but I don't know, this is a weird feeling that I kind of noticed. But don't be scared away by how much pain someone might feel. Like I know, like I said, mine was pretty painful, but just because someone's piercing experience was painful for them doesn't mean it's going to be painful for you guys. I'll probably say that every single piercing video that I make, that not everyone's piercing pain will be the same, not everyone's experience will be the same. So yeah, so that's that. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And <laughs> um, so I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you guys later. Uh, leave some comments, like and subscribe what you might want to see next. I'm going to be working on my avatar series soon. I know I had a few people asking about that. A lot of shit happened on the PS4. That was my main my main thing where I watched all my movies and stuff on. So I tried, I found an old DVD player that I might be able to use. I'm just gonna go through and watch an episode, do a review, watch the next episode, do a review. And so I'll work on getting those out. I might film them on the Fridays when I film and upload and record and all that, but I will try and find out a scheduling where I can, I'll try to get a schedule going for that. So yeah. Look forward to that. I'm hoping to get that out soon. 
and I'm hoping to do more videos and actually keep my channel active because I've been really bad. I've been like uploading every two weeks, but then I won't upload for a month and then I'll do two weeks and then a week and then it's like, really bad. So I'm gonna try and keep my channel active. Um, it's really just not my fault because I've been lazy. I have the time to do it Fridays and I just end up sitting there on my couch and <laughs> just going through Facebook and everything. So, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will See you guys later.